the American people handed President Trump and Senate Republicans a decisive victory. And now the real work begins, delivering on our agenda. That starts with ending the Biden-Harris border crisis and deporting illegal immigrants. Incoming Senate Majority Leader John Thune there vowing to deliver on Trump's great American comeback. That begins with declaring a national emergency on day one to carry out his campaign promise of mass deportations. Here for reaction is Senator Marsha Blackburn from the great state of Tennessee. Good morning to you, Senator. Welcome back to the National Desk. You supported Senator Rick Scott for Senate Majority Leader. Will Senator Thune help deliver Trump's promise to the American people or will he be an obstacle? Jan, I have been so pleased to see Republicans unite and talk about how we get President Trump's agenda across the finish line. There is so much positive conversation on that. And quite frankly, people are really excited to get to work because the American people delivered a mandate to President-elect Donald Trump on Election Day. Speaking of work, Semaphore reporting, you asked Thune if he would work to complete Trump's border wall. What was what was the answer? Do you think he can get it done? I do indeed think it's going to be done. When you look at the demands that are there from the American people, every town's a border town, every state is a border state. And Jan, one of the things we have heard from border communities and communities across the country is that the fentanyl, the fentanyl deaths, the human trafficking, the sex trafficking, cartels and gangs that have set up shop in U.S. cities and are making our communities less safe. That is the item at the top of the to-do list. And quite honestly, wherever you went around the country, it was the issue of inflation and also immigration that were at the top of the list. Get the inflation down, secure the southern border, return our communities to a level of safety that the American people expect. There are reports the Biden administration has lost track of more than 300,000 migrant children. Is there a plan, Senator, to hold anyone accountable for this? You better believe there is. I started asking about this issue about 19 months ago. And HHS, Human Services, and the Department of Homeland Security, each of these agencies have not been able to say, this is where these children are. And you are talking about children that were many times trafficked into this country. Right. We know from some news reporting that they've been put to work in factories. They're doing dangerous jobs. Uh, they're not showing up for school or no one can now find them. They're not answering the calls that go to the sponsors that were improperly vetted. So these are precious little lives. And I can only imagine the fear that these children must be living with every single day, not knowing what is going to happen to them and not knowing if these children have been put into gangs or sex trafficking rings. Yeah, this is frightening to think about here in our country. You recently introduced a bill to address human trafficking at the southern border. Tell us more about that. Yes, indeed. I've had several pieces of legislation. There is one piece that Senator Rosen and I have, bipartisan, that would make certain that Hamas terrorists are not slipping into this country. We also have another piece of legislation where we are working to make certain that we return DNA testing to the border so that we know kids are not being trafficked. When we also are looking at other provisions that would strengthen the ability to make certain that, that this border is closed to these individuals that are not only drug trafficking, but also the human trafficking that is taking place. And Jan, I will say this, one thing to realize is that there is nothing compassionate, nothing compassionate about this Biden-Harris border policy. Trump is quickly assembling his cabinet with some notable picks, including Congressman Matt Gates for Attorney General, your colleague, Senator Marco Rubio for Secretary of State. We've got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as Health and Human Services Secretary. Will the Senate be able to get Trump's nominees across the finish line? Yes, indeed. And yesterday, some of us were talking about the importance of holding these hearings prior to the swearing in, the inaugural, on January 20th. 
What we want to do is be able to approve these, these individuals, have that Senate confirmation vote on January 20th, so that as the president heads to the Oval Office and goes to work, that we have people approved and going to their offices to get to work on day one. We know past presidents have used recess appointments to get their nominees confirmed. Is that something that you guys are looking at as a possibility to speed up the confirmation process? What we would like to do is to move forward with these confirmations and do them on day one. If there are confirmations that are languishing, every president should be able to fill out their cabinet. They should be able to get to work for the American people. There are ambassadorships, there are secretarial positions that we need to see filled and filled quickly. So I think the Democrats have a choice. They can work with us and move them to the floor for the confirmation vote, or we can move them to recess appointments as necessary. And you agree with all the picks? I think that President Trump has done a great job filling out his slate of nominees. I'm looking forward to getting to work January 3rd so that we can begin the hearings and then quickly move to the confirmation process. The American people delivered a mandate. They're looking for action and it's up to us to take that action. Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, always a pleasure talking to you, ma'am. Thanks for joining us this always. morning. Always. Thank you, Jan. Thank you.